This video is brought to you by Mantis Sleep. Hey folks, how's it going? I am back once again with another review, and this time I'm talking about the long-awaited, eagerly anticipated adaptation of the hit video game Cuphead, and the uh, cartoons called The Cuphead Show. Appropriate. Guys, I was not expecting to be as excited about this show as I ended up being. And this also includes when it comes to me researching the show and diving into the history of the game, of the show, of all of the content that was the inspiration behind both respective properties. Let me just say this. I am going to do a video called What Ruined Fleischer Studios. It is such an amazing topic. For those who don't know, Fleischer, the ones behind like Popeye, well, at least the cartoon, Betty Boop, was at the forefront along with Disney with silly symphonies back during the 1920s, 30s, and 40s with doing that golden animation, rubber hose style. And Flasher here just didn't hold its punches. They went full on quality to the max. Again, a story for another video. And, and by the way, I am going to do a full on review of Cuphead the Game on the gaming channel. By the way, go subscribe to my gaming channel. But for the time being, I'm going to focus on Cuphead the show. Let's begin. So the show itself is on Netflix. It was a homebrew where Netflix Studios did the animation. You get 12 episodes, but it was recently announced that there'll be 48 in the form of two seasons. And that was announced before like Cuphead even debuted on Netflix. So Netflix must have felt confident about the success of the show, which they were right on the money. They weren't dealing with the devil like Cuphead was. And like I said before, the show is an adaptation of the hit indie game Cuphead that was done by Studio MDHR and was released to 2017. The game itself is a run and gun with the visual aesthetic and inspiration of Flasher Studios, Silly Symphonies, of the rubber hose animation from the golden age of animation during the 1930s or so. Now, the show for Cuphead was developed by David Wasson, Wason, Croissant, and I was like, I wonder who this is. And I clicked on his name, and he was one of the guys behind the Mickey Mouse shorts on Disney. And I was like, whoa, that makes so much sense. Because when I watched the Cuphead show, just seeing the energy, the movement, the interactions, it reminded me so much of the Mickey Mouse shorts, which are also based on like the Silly Symphonies and the old school Mickey Mouse, but with a new coat of modern paint. The Mickey Mouse shorts are brilliant, love them. So David being picked to help with Cuphead, to develop it, that was a good call. Netflix is doing work when it comes to video game adaptations. Uh, Castlevania, Arcane, Cuphead. Netflix is really taking that stigma of how video game adaptations don't typically do that well, but all three of those have been stellar. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do next. Why isn't Netflix doing the Mario movie? So the creators of the game, Chad and Jared Moldenhauer, they oversaw the show. They were producers, and it's always a good sign to have the creators who launched the initial vision and its success to bring them in to help continue said success via this adaptation. Now, for those who do not know, Cuphead, when it was released, definitely made headlines in a variety of ways, where aesthetically, visually, outstanding. It was animated, hand-drawn on ones. It was a visual masterpiece. And just how fluid the characters are, how they channeled the quality animation and, and energy of the 1930s with something like Fleischer Studios and their content. It was a love letter for that era of animation. It is a masterpiece. Now, let's talk about the actual cartoon itself in greater detail, because everybody has it on their mind where they're like, wow, visually, Cuphead the game is outstanding. Will the show be able to compare to said quality? Here's the answer. Yes, but not in the way that you think. I think people are spoiled with their expectations. Cuphead the game set the bar so high that many folks were expecting the exact same treatment visually, animating on ones with 50,000 like drawings uh, that are inked, and they're expecting that level of dedication of quality in the Cuphead show, which I'll be real with you, is asking for a lot. The amount of time, money, effort, it is overwhelming. Like folks don't really quite understand the gamble and the hard work that went into Cuphead the game. It's unreal that they were able to pull that off. They put their houses up for a mortgage, the creators. Like that's that's how dedicated they were. And it's not to say that the folks who made the show and the path they took to do the show have any less passion or gumption or dedication, but they did it in a way where it was optimized to expect a show done on ones, especially the format that the show is, where it's like 10 minute episodes. That's unreal. And again, I wouldn't turn it away if that was the case, but the uh, option we did get is just as satisfying to me. The animation itself was done via Toon Boom Harmony. 
And the folks who made the show did their homework the same way the folks who made Cuphead did their homework for the game, where they observed all of the 1930s animation with the movement of the characters, their designs, the, the backgrounds, the watercolor backgrounds. There, there were, I believe, 30 backgrounds in Cuphead the game. There's over a hundred watercolor backgrounds in each episode of the Cuphead show. To dismiss the Cuphead show and say, oh, it's not done on ones. It's garbage. This is bad. It's like, no, shut your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. So Toon Boom was able to channel the energy from the game and have that same film graininess to it with the artifacts, with how it's old timey, with certain models and sets where it actually pays homage to like the rotographs and rotoscoping that Fleischer did back in the day. Look at this clip from Sinbad the Sailor and how they were able to achieve this 3D effect back in the 1930s. And the cartoon show for Cuphead pays homage to that, like the effort, the love and craft, the way these folks who made the show made the game, how much they love the 1930s animation. It, it's unreal. Their admiration is completely acknowledged by me. Now, let's bring it into the actual stories and the characters and the dialogue. Because for so many video games, we're given a character that's relatively quiet, like Mario or Link or Samus. I know they are the strong and silent type because it allows us to plug ourselves into their shoes and run around. And of course, they have their own characters and personalities. And that's the great hurdle for video game adaptations, where it's like, can we make this engaging with a character that's a lot quieter compared to other characters from a movie or a show? And we've been able to see that like with a Netflix adaptation of Castlevania, the characters are just like, we have to go full force and give a nice, well-established character. That's the way to do it. And for Cuphead, I saw them as empty slaves in a way. Be like, okay, from the 1930s, we can kind of take some maybe inspiration for how sassy the characters were back then. And to me, it works because Cuphead himself is impetuous, a bit of a brat. I was a little bit surprised when I'm like, okay, they, they seem like they're kids in this show. Because I'm like, I don't really know where to pin that because they have Elder Kettle, who's like their guardian and they live with him at his house. Uh, somewhat cantankerous, but not too much. You got a Mugman who's a bit more reserved, nervous. There's like lumps of play with the personalities. And I feel that, that the writers for Cuphead did a good job shaping these characters for having fun interactions where it's enough for them to move the story along. Uh, you have the devil who's fun. He's probably the best character. He kind of reminds me of a more competent Squidward. You know, a bunch of fun side characters. Miss Chalice, though she didn't show up until the last episode, though it, it ended on a cliffhanger. Spoilers. The dice guy, I forget his name, uh, voiced by Wayne Brady. By the way, all the voice actors are great. Phenomenal. They really capture that accent, like the transatlantic accent from that time. You know, hey, <laughs> that's what they sounded like. It, it works. It's got great energy. And again, the level of dedication from the visuals to the writing, to the sets, to the era of the 1930s, it's all there. Now, there's that running story of like the devil trying to get Cuphead's soul. Like that's established in the first episode. It's kind of a running theme, which is good. It's gonna have something to kind of run with as a backbone. But if you're looking for like a story-driven show where it's like we're getting into the mind of these characters, like an amphibia or an owl house or whatever, you're not gonna see that here, at least not at the moment. It's a lot more slice of life, goofy cartooniness. And that's fine because that's what it's based off of. The short form writing content and humor of shows and shorts from the 1930s. And I see that with Cuphead and I appreciate it and I acknowledge it. I'm engaged. Uh, there's some moments where I laughed out loud with the humor. Other episodes, like the baby episode with the bottle, I'm like, yeah, it's okay. But at this point, I kind of give these first episodes like you're just flushing your characters out. That's the point. They get us acquainted. And I think things are going to get crazier in season two and three. And I'm excited for that because there's a big world. Cuphead provided like so many characters and villains and we've only seen a fraction of them so far in the first season and there's so much more to explore and that gets me excited. So, all right, those are my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think in the comments and I'll see you all next time. So a big shout out to this video sponsor, Manta Sleep. Y'all know those sleep masks that people wear on planes during flights? No, not the pilots, not them. That would be bad. Well, I've never used one of those before, until now. And apparently, I've been missing out on some quality sleep and I'm pissed off about it. It was like a secret that was kept away from me. I actually have a friend who uses sleep mask every day. Like I see him putting them on while at conventions at night because we share a hotel room. And I was like, oh, Jax, I should go ask Jax what he thinks about these Manta masks. I went out of my way to buy him one. That's how dedicated I am to find out more about this product. He's also like really buff and all about like health and fitness. So he was a good person to ask about these things. So I called him and I was like, hey, Jax, can I buy you one of these Manta sleep masks so I can get your opinion on it? Because I'm a newbie. I, I don't know enough. I, I'll, I'll wear mine, but I want to see what you, someone with experience with masks, what you think.
And he's like, what, free stuff? Uh, sure, fire away. But I was like, hey, hold on. There is a stipulation here. You got to give me a review and you got to film yourself with the mask, which he did. Jax, you son of a bitch. He said the mask was awesome. He said it was super comfortable. It was easy to adjust. And of course, it helped him to achieve some really deep sleep. Now for me, when I first used mine, I could actually feel my eyes get super heavy. And I had like this relaxing feeling flow over my eyeballs into the back of my brain. It was so nice. I was like, hold on, have I been missing out? Cause this feeling is helping me to feel extremely restful. Mantis sleep masks provide 100% blackout for your eyes with soft, breathable fabric that's comfortable in any position. The eye cups also provide zero eye pressure and are spacious enough for easy blinking. Also, the fastener in the back is snag-free, so it won't be catching or pulling your hair, but the strap is adjustable, so you can find a nice personalized fit. You can even like mix and match the modules on the mask. That's pretty cool. So all in all, I've never gone above and beyond like this before for a sponsor where I actually like buy it to do research. I, I was that into it. And I gotta say, money well spent. I love my sleep mask. My buddy loves his. These Manta masks are incredible. And I guess I've ironically been sleeping on them. So never allow poor sleep to interfere with your life again. Hit up my link in the description down below and use my code SABERSPARK to get 10% off your order. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm going to go take a nap.